Hi everyone, it's Justin. Let's say you want to invest in a premium, luxury, high-end handbag. Maybe. Of course, given the price, you want to be sure that you're getting the right one, meaning a bag that's not going to go out of trend too soon, please. <laughs> a bag that's well-made, good quality, and a bag that retains its value over time. In the handbag market, it's essential to also have a look at the resale worth, even if you're buying the bag new. So I've made a list of 10 handbags that fulfill all these criteria. And for each one, I will also explain why I think it's a good investment. Hermès Kelly. Let's start with the crème de la crème des handbags. <laughs> Every designer, including myself, dreams of creating a bag that aspirational and that successful. It's the bag named Kelly by the French house Hermès. It's also a very smart rebranding story because when it launched, it wasn't called Kelly at all. The bag was designed originally in 1930 by Monsieur Dumas of house Hermès. It was renamed way later after in 1956, actress Grace Kelly, freshly engaged to the Prince of Monaco, but already pregnant, used that bag when assaulted by paparazzi to try to hide her baby bump. The photos went around the world and the house Hermès renamed the bag after her. That was an extremely smart move marketing-wise. The bag itself is handmade by one single person from the beginning to the end. It needs up to 25 hours for one bag. It includes 36 leather pieces plus all the studs, padlock, etc. It's sewn backwards and then turned upside down. The result is a very clean bag on the outside. When looking at it, I couldn't really say when the bag was designed, which typically means that the design is timeless. But there is a catch to this. The bag is not available for sale. You can't get it new, neither on the website nor in the Hermes store, unless you know someone who puts you on the waiting list. And even if you're a celebrity who knows someone, you will still have to pay the full price for the bag. They don't gift anything and they don't make any discount on a Kelly. You can get it secondhand if you wake up early. <laughs> the price will vary depending on the, on the size, the leather, the material, the style, the design, because it has been declined in many, many different shapes and forms. But it's safe to say that a Kelly will start at over $10,000 secondhand. And here's the second thing. The price is up from eight to $9,000 three years ago. So the Kelly, even secondhand, gains value over time. So if you manage to get your hands on one, keep it, <laughs> take great care of it, wait 20 years, and you'll make a great benefit on it. Hermès Birkin. The Birkin bag is another one that's incredibly famous. It was created in 1984 for Jane Birkin. Makes sense. Apparently, the story says that she stumbled upon Mr. Dumas, the next one of House Hermès, on a plane and that she complained she couldn't find a proper bag to fit in all her stuff and her baby's bottles. He must have said something like, hold my champagne. <laughs> and he created a completely new bag, which can indeed fit a lot. It was deeper, more supple than any bag on the market at that time. And you could expand the sides, which was pretty new. The bag was named after Jane Birkin, fittingly. <laughs> she gets royalties for the use of her name and the royalties go to charity. And Hermes got another bag with a great story behind it. The bag is not advertised anywhere. Nobody really knows how many they sell per year, how many they even produce per year. It's all about exclusivity and, and secrets. So how to get to Birkin? Well, you can't unless you've already owned one in the past. So it's like the story of the chicken and the egg. Which one was here first? How, how do you get the first one? <laughs> and it's all a big secret. Again, you need to know someone or, or get lucky. <laughs> On the second hand market, a Birkin even beats a Kelly and its worth increases even faster, at least in the latest years. Great investment piece if you can get your hands on one. Victoria Beckham reportedly owns over 100 Hermes bags for a total value of over $2 million and counting then. It's much smarter than to invest in stocks. And the pink Birkin on that photo alone cost $150,000, just to give you an idea. Chanel 255. When this one came out, designed by Gabriel Chanel in February 1955, February 55, 255, it was quite a sensation. 
Until then, all purses, at least the chic ones for the evening and for receptions in society, were meant to be held. That's why it was called a handbag. You had to hold it in your hand. Now came a new design that you could wear on your shoulder. It was so much more practical than anything that was on the market at that time. The quilted surface, now a symbol of Chanel, was inspired by horse riding apparel. The double C logo that you see on the back today wasn't there in the initial version. It was added by Lagerfeld in the 80s. The strap was in metal only. Now it's made of metal and leather. And it has two flaps. That's typical of this bag. When you open the top flap, there is a second one underneath to prevent things from falling out. Let's talk about inflation for a minute, shall we? When the bag launched in 1955, it retailed for $220. Now, the price starts at $4,000 and you can pay up to $6,500 for the same bag, pretty much. <laughs> so if your mother or your grandmother got one in the 50s, well, that would be ideal. If not, the price tag keeps rising. They're increasing the new price of the bag, still now, and the second-hand price is increasing as well. So no matter how much it costs today, it's expected to still rise in the future and it remains a good investment piece. Louis Vuitton, speedy. Vuitton used to make only travel bags and suitcases. For a very long time, they didn't make any handbag at all. They were not on that market. Then came the 50s and Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> and she asked for a smaller, more practical version of the keep all travel bag, something more for everyday use. And well, she was a major actress, so they created that bag thinking of her. The bag is made in coated canvas, waterproof. In the past, coated fabrics were extremely stiff. That wasn't really good for purses, for handbags. But Vuitton found a way to make a more supple coating, and that's the one you can touch now when you go to a Vuitton store. The original Speedy was 30 centimeters long. Now it also exists in 25, 35, and 40 centimeters, so you have the choice. It had a checkerboard pattern, always, but the bag was copied so much that Vuitton introduced the monogram pattern on top, which was harder to copy, at least for a while, because it's more detailed. Now you probably noticed that counterfeiters have long caught up. They are absolutely able to replicate the monogram version as well. And this bag is one of the most copied in the world. The bag has been declined in multiple colors and design. And in fact, Vuitton started this current trend of collaborating with another designer. You know, when a house calls in somebody external and that designer revisits an iconic piece from the house, bringing his or her own twist to it. Well, that's, that's something that Vuitton started pretty much. The entry level price for a Speedy 25, the smaller one without the strap, is at exactly $1,000, psychological price. Secondhand, you can find one for 600, maybe a bit more. It's more affordable than other famous handbags, famous brands, because mostly it's canvas with less leather to it. Celine Luggage Tote. I'm a fan of Phoebe Philo, who was the creative director of Celine, but unfortunately not anymore. <laughs> she designed several bags that are absolutely timeless and timeless is almost her aesthetics. She was brilliant at it. One of these bags is the luggage bag from 2010. You see cotton tote bags everywhere. Supermarkets will gift you one just to put your groceries. But the Celine bag elevates the tote to a new luxury item. It has a masculine business touch, but with a twinkle in the eye, because if you look at it, it looks like a face where the zipper is the mouth. It is very spacious, your laptop fits in. It's a perfect bag for a city lifestyle. New, the bag currently costs between $2,007 and $4,000. On the secondhand market, you might be able to find one for slightly under $1,000. And I say might, because here's the thing, when Celine switched designers and the new one is not as celebrated as Phoebe Philo was, when the change happened, everything she designed rose in worth overnight and suddenly there was nothing to buy on the secondhand market. <laughs> so that's also a tip. If you're looking to invest in a handbag, look out for brands that are gonna change designers soon because that often creates a, a high fluctuation in the worth of the pieces. Longchamp Le Pliage. This bag is a total bestseller. It was designed in 1993 by Philippe Casgrain, again a French house. The secret here, I think, is the marketing, actually. 
they advertise a lot in the press. Uh, they make very colorful, very pretty and appealing campaigns. They are extremely good at this. And they often create special editions with people like Kate Moss or Alexa Chung. Um, the bag has been declined so far in over 150 colors and prints. It's cheaper than other famous bags because it's made mostly in nylon. The point of it is that you can fold it like an envelope to turn it into a mini handbag that you can use in the evening. So it's two handbags in one, good value for money, right? And it's perfect for a young woman who wants to get a famous handbag but can't yet afford Vuitton & Co. It starts at $145, which sounds like a cheapy compared to the rest of this video. <laughs> Longchamp also has a leather version of this one, special editions and many much more expensive other bags in their assortment. But this one is really the, the entry-level product that still feels special and premium. Dior, Lady Dior. In 1995, Princess Diana came to France on a state visit. The host, the wife of President Chirac, wanted to gift her a very special bag for the occasion. The bag was designed for her and named after her, Lady D, as we call her in French. Afterwards, Diana was seen on several different occasions with several versions of the bag, which means that she really, really enjoyed it and that the design worked for her. So the bag became extremely closely associated with her image and popularity. The bag exists in multiple basic colors, which hold their value over time. And then there are all the special editions, which if you pick wisely, even gain value over time. On average, the Lady Dior has increased in value by 14% between 2014 and 2016. And I believe the trend is the same up to 2019. And the House of Dior, just like Chanel, keeps raising the price tag of the new bags. So buy a Lady Dior and just wait. Prada backpack. Designed by Mucha Prada, in 1984, inspired by military bags. I think when you look at it, you can clearly see the inspiration. The backpack represents everything that Prada stands for, I think. Utility, it's very practical. Nomadism, a certain idea of elegance, that's typically Prada. The closures have been declined in endless colors and textures, but the shape has remained the same over time, pretty much. The bag retails for a thousand hundred dollars, euros, sorry. For me, that's a timeless design. It worked with an 80s wardrobe, so it was on trend when it came out, but it also works with the grunge wardrobe, normcore, minimalistic, whatever came afterwards. It works with every style. Since that bag came out, it has been the benchmark for all other backpacks. If you look in Berlin right now, you'll see all the hipsters wearing bags from multiple different brands, but they all look somewhere similar to that one. Stella McCartney, Falabella. This one is one of my personal favorites, designed by Stella McCartney, launched in 2010. That was the time, the era of huge shopper bags. Think Paris Hilton and all the girls on reality TV. <laughs> they would carry a little one, a Fendi baguette or a little Gucci or a little Saint Laurent or something. And then a second one, a huge one like, like this, where your stuff actually fits in. But the brand was smart enough to decline the bag in several sizes and colors, mostly smaller sizes, so that it survived the trend and established itself as a classic beyond the Paris Hilton era. It's one of the first high-end designer bags which is completely vegan. The hardware is a special development and the bag is sewn to the chain, nice and slouchy. It's a great design detail. The cut is simple and the bag is timeless. The bag retails from 700 for a small one to 1200 for a bigger one. You can get the bags a little bit cheaper sometimes when there's a sale in limited quantity if you're quick. You can get a small one secondhand for 500 and a big one for eight or 900. So it holds its value pretty well. Givenchy Antigone. This bag is a little bit under the radar. Never made a splash in the press. I wonder why, because it's a classic shape it's a brilliant design and it's the perfect business bag. It's a mix of masculine and feminine aesthetics. It comes in three sizes. It has the name and the quality of the house Givenchy behind it, which is a great guarantee when talking about investment pieces. It retails between $1,300 and $2,500 new. And even the smallest one still costs over a thousand if you get it secondhand. That's one of the high quality bags, very well made, 
but it hasn't been trending or made famous by anyone famous, yet it's being produced since 2011 and it holds its value, I think it's a great investment piece. In the video description below this video, I am writing in prices, new secondhand and more information, everything that I can find for you. Remember though that the prices will vary over time, mostly upwards, especially if you're looking at the bags and the brands that I talked about in this video. Basically, when a winning design launches, the more you wait, the more you will have to pay. So the sport in the handbag market consists in spotting a bestseller right when it launches, before the price starts to increase. Or, strategy number two, you're on the lookout for houses that will switch designers soon and where you think that the new designer won't be as good or as celebrated as the previous one. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much. And I have a question today for you in the comments. I would like to ask, when you're shopping for a handbag, what are you looking for? What does the perfect handbag look like? Characteristics? What does it have to be able to do? to bear, <laughs> what are you looking for? Thank you very much, and I will see you soon in a new video. Take care, bye.